I had the great honor to work with our next inductee over a period of years where he was absolutely electrifying, whether it was on the gridiron or on the Mogul's Hills. Let's take a look now at the career of our next inductee, world champion Jeremy Bloom. Few athletes have had such a dramatic impact on one sport, let alone two, as Jeremy Bloom. The two-time Olympian dominated freestyle moguls in the 2000s, winning three World Cup titles, two World Championship medals, and a record six-win World Cup mogul streak that remained unbeaten for seven years. And did we mention he was pretty accomplished on the gridiron as well? In two seasons as a kick returner and wideout for the University of Colorado Buffaloes, Bloom had five plays of 75 yards or longer, tying Byron Whizzer White for the second most in school history. All of this started innocently enough with a battered old green motorcycle helmet, a tattered Superman cape, and a gnarly bump run called Ambush at Keystone. Bloom's parents purchased a condo at Keystone and lived there on weekends riding to the lifts while his father blasted Michael Jackson on the radio. Jeremy wore the helmet and the cape while bombing down the Black Diamond Run to the amazement of the other recreational skiers. In moguls, Jeremy became a prodigy with a great head for competition. He got free goggles from Oakley at age 11 and earned a place on the U.S. ski team at only 15, the youngest male freestyle skier ever to do so. Coincidentally, that was the point in time when he also started running wild as a slippery quarterback on the youth football fields of Loveland. Bloom excelled at both sports and would surrender neither. There were epic juggling acts as Bloom shuttled between ski training camps and football practices. He received a full football scholarship, and it was during that first CU training camp that Bloom decided to quit skiing. Despite solid results, he remained buried on the C-team with little hope of getting World Cup starts. Then came a call from U.S. Moguls coach Donnie St. Pierre inviting Jeremy to the team summer training camp in Chile. He went to South America with the blessing of the Colorado coaching staff. And at the end of the camp, St. Pierre offered Bloom a World Cup start in a December event in Teen France, along with a promise that if he finished in the top 12, he would be elevated to the A-team. Bloom finished third, made the A-team, and the very next year became a world champion. Then came the remarkable season of 2005. Said teammate Travis Cabrell, he's the best natural talent I've ever seen in our sport. And Jeremy lived up to it by winning six straight World Cups on his way to a second overall World Cup title and another World Championship medal. As a professional skier, Bloom elevated the sport of mogul skiing with his mix of power and raw athleticism. And his talents and appeal stretch beyond the mogul's course. In the 2005 Warren Miller movie Higher Ground, Jeremy not only skis deep powder lines, but also became the first athlete to co-narrate a movie with the ski film legend. As a model, Bloom had appeared in photo ad campaigns for Tommy Hilfiger and Abercrombie and & Fitch, while turning down numerous other opportunities. In Torino in 2006, he would finish sixth and joined in the celebrations for his teammate Toby Dawson, who claimed the bronze. The morning after the Moguls competition, Bloom was on a plane back to the States and the NFL scouting combined workouts in Indianapolis. He was selected in the fifth round by the Philadelphia Eagles. In 2008, Jeremy founded Wish of a Lifetime, an organization dedicated to granting lifelong wishes to senior citizens who have overcome tremendous challenges in their own lives. He retired from both skiing and football in 2009. During the course of his whirlwind athletic career, Bloom provided one-stop shopping for all our fantasies. Globetrotting ski superstar? Absolutely. College football game breaker? No doubt. Mainstream model who makes women swoon? Check. The U.S. ski team's marketing tagline at the time was best in the world. But as U.S. freestyle legend Johnny Mosley put it, with Jeremy, never mind best in the world in moguls, he's the best in the world, period, in everything. And so tonight, for his lifetime achievements on snow, we now welcome Jeremy Bloom into the U.S. Ski and Snowboard Hall of Fame and present him with our sport's highest award, the U.S. Ski and Snowboard Hall of Fame Medal of Honor. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome to the stage a man who can find the line. This extraordinary athlete and Fort Collins, Colorado native, Jeremy Bloom, 
escorted to the stage by Hall of Fame Executive Board Member John Momertz of Marquette, Michigan. Jeremy Ryan Bloom, having been elected by the U.S. Ski and Snowboard Association and a representation of the 15 million skiers and snowboarders in America, we hereby bestow upon you this Medal of Honor in Vail, Colorado, and confer upon you from this day forward, April 13th of 2013, induction into the U.S. Ski and Snowboard Hall of Fame in Ishpeming, Michigan, where your accomplishments will forever be remembered. <laughs> I just want to take in this moment, and I appreciate it more than you'll ever know. And, uh, you know, there's a few experiences in your life that you get to live out that you know that you'll remember for the rest of your life. And... There's no doubt this is one of those moments in, in my life. And I appreciate all of you being here tonight to share this wonderful experience with, with me. I grew up in, in Loveland, Colorado. I'm the youngest of three kids. Uh, my brother picked on me every day growing up, beat me at everything for the first 12 years of my life. And uh, I appreciate that. If he was here, I would say thank you, because it gave me great motivation to, be, uh, to someday beat him. And uh, in skiing, I, I grew up uh, with my mom and my dad, my brother and my sister. And my mom you know, wouldn't let us eat a lot of candy in, in, in the household. She's very health focused, you know, really from the day that I was born. And so um, actually, our, our dessert growing up was crushed ice and orange juice you can believe that. <laughs> but I started learn, I learned how to ski when I was, when I was three years old. And uh, my mom and my dad and, and my brother and, and my sister would go off and, and I would go out with my grandfather. And my grandfather was, you know, the biggest junk food junkie you've ever met. <laughs> and uh, so we'd hit the slopes, he'd put that helmet on me and a Superman cape on my back. And he'd, po he'd fill his pockets full of these little miniature sized candy bars. And uh, we would get off the ski lift and he would reach into his pocket and he'd say, Jeremy, if you want this candy, you're gonna have to learn how to ski and he'd throw it down the mountain. <laughs> and I'd ski down and get the candy. And uh, needless to say, I, I love skiing from the first day I put on <laughs> skis. You know, today I've, I've really reflected upon um, you know, my, my entire career and, you know, when you're so focused on, on, uh, on a sport, at least for me, I never allowed myself to really reflect on, you know, what I had accomplished or what I had done because you're just so focused on, you know, really what that next goal is, what that next mountain is, what that next accomplishment was. And, I, you know, I spent the, the day just kind of going over everything, starting from when I was, you know, three years old and, you know, just a handful of miles from where we are tonight. Uh, in, in Keystone and learning how to ski bumps on, on Ann Bush and then joining Team Breckenridge when I was 11 years old and uh, being coached by some of the best coaches in the world and through the ranks um, to the World Cups and traveling the world and getting the, the, the great privilege to represent our country in, in, in two Olympics. And I think what, what, I've tried to, what I've boiled all of those experiences and memories down to was the thing that's lasting for me is not the medals or any of the wins or any of the losses. It's the people. It's the people that are the reason I'm here today. And tonight, 
is about those people. Uh, tonight is about my dad, who uh, has been my best friend my entire life, who has been my mentor, who has been my ski coach, who has coached my football teams in middle school, uh, and who I can't remember one time when he would come home from work where he wouldn't throw passes to me in the backyard or you know, he wouldn't uh, help coach me or whatever I needed. And uh, I just hope someday, Dad, uh, when I have kids, that I can be half the father that uh, you were to me. I love you. Uh, tonight is about my mom, uh, who taught me at a very young age that it doesn't matter you know, what you accomplish in this world. It doesn't matter how many medals you have or you know, anything materialistic. It matters, what matters is how you treat people. What matters is if you try to live a good life and give back and help people that may have been uh, not quite as uh, fortunate as, as you were. And, uh, you know, for coming, traveling the world and being at all those World Cups, I don't, you didn't miss one football game, whether it was Florida State or Kansas State. And uh, all those early mornings in middle school and, and high school where you drive me to competitions and help me do my schoolwork and made sure I got there on time and teaching me that from a young age I could accomplish anything in this world. I appreciate that, Mom. I love you very much. Tonight is about Andy Carroll, who by profession was my agent my whole career, but in reality was one of my best friends and still to this day and, and one of my mentors. And um, the video got it slightly wrong. Um, the real story is I, I quit skiing my senior year of high school and I had a full ride scholarship to the University of Colorado. I just won the NORAM tour and I felt like I deserved that chance to try to make the Olympics, and I wasn't given that opportunity. And uh, I said, the University of Colorado wants me, and, and the ski team doesn't, and that's the way I felt. And so I moved to Boulder, and I started training with the football team, and I was so excited to be a member of the Buffs, and I was like, you know, I tried the skiing thing, it didn't work out, now I'm, I'm going into football. And I got a call over the summer by Andy, and he said, uh, hey, I think I can get you funding to that training camp in South America. Um, and I immediately dismissed it. I said, I'm having so much fun at the University of Colorado. I, you know, I, I moved on and I'm focused on football. And I thought I hung up the phone and he just said, think about it. And I hung up the phone and I thought about it and I called him back. And um, he said, go down there, go down there and kick ass. Just show them what you can do. And um, so I, I said yes, and I went down there, and for 23 days, I was the first one on that ski hill before anybody, and I was the last one off of it. And I remember skiing home some days in Chile. I couldn't walk. I mean, my, I, I literally could not walk, and I'd sit in the ice bath that night. And uh, at the end of the camp, Scott Rawls and Donnie St. Pierre and, and Liz they came to me and they said, okay, you got our attention <laughs> and we want to offer you a one World Cup spot, one World Cup spot in, in Teen France to try to make the Olympics. I was so excited. I was like, yes, that's my, that's my opportunity. That's what I, what I want. That's what I worked for. So I flew back and talked to Coach Barnett at the University of Colorado. He said, go for it. So that's, that's a true story. I appreciate you, Andy. Thanks, buddy. By the way, that sponsor money never came. <laughs> True story. <laughs> you know it. <laughs> Tonight is about Scott Rawls, who 
uh, at 11 years old, I, I got the blessing to be coached by one of the best in the business. And he went on to become the head coach of, of the U.S. ski team. And, and, and Scott, thank you for all the extra work that you put in for me in my career. And all the late nights that we had with game planning around how we could you know, get an inch better. And uh, I'll, you just went over and beyond for me, and, and I really appreciate that. And Liz McIntyre, who after uh, I made the ski team, it was really Scott and Liz who are, are both here tonight. And you know, Liz, thank you for that one time at Mount Hood when uh, you know, all I wanted to do was jump and take air. And Liz, Liz knew I needed to work on my turns. So I'm watching all my competitors be able to jump, learn all these great tricks. And for two straight weeks, she makes me ski not one mobile run, but the whole time ski with one ski. Just skiing on a right and then a left. And for the whole camp, because uh, she knew that that would make me a lot better than it did. So thank you, Liz. I appreciate it, both of you so much. And the, I can't possibly thank everybody by name, but uh, the Colorado Mountains and the Colorado community, all of you have been so supportive in my career and uh, are a big reason why I was able to reach the level of success that I did. And I felt that support my, my whole career, and um, I, I really appreciated it and appreciate it today. And when I, when I left athletics, my goal was to completely reinvent myself and completely redefine myself. And my goals now are, um, with Wish of a Lifetime, I get to hang out with extraordinary people. People that were on the beaches of Normandy and the boats of Pearl Harbor. People that pulled us through the Great Depression. People that paved our roads. People that gave us life. And sometimes in our culture, we focus a lot on the youth and the young people and often forget about the oldest and the people that have made great contributions to our world. And through Wish of a Lifetime, our hope is to remind all of us the importance of that generation. And we do that by granting their, their lifelong wish. And it's been, uh, I've probably learned the most lessons in, that, out of anything uh, with Wish of a Lifetime. So in closing, um, I just want you to know that I will take this honor, uh, and I'll never forget about it. And I, I accept it with great responsibility um, to carry on the legend and tradition of everybody in the Seeing Hall of Fame. And it means the world to me. So thank you so much.